Welcome back, I'm Shane and this is Relative Time. Running this channel, I get to see a lot of interesting watches and then share them with all of you. And when I look back, one of the more unusual ones I got to look at was the Air Kanji by the Australian-based microbrand Matthew & Sons. As far as dive watches go, the design here is very atypical, with this very rounded, organically flowing case, bezel, and crystal. And after a while, it starts to resemble its namesake, a jellyfish. So when their owner, Matthew Francis, reached out and asked if I'd like to see their version of a dress watch, I jumped at it. I was pretty curious what they could come up with. This is a JCB, whose name and inspiration originated with Matthew's grandfather, and a watch he wore as he immigrated to Australia from Scotland in the 60s. Now today when we look at most watches of that era, we all think of them as dress watches by our standards. But for most people back then, that watch wasn't for special occasions. It was just their everyday watch that they wore pretty much no matter what they were doing. So even though the JCB is considered a dress watch, the idea behind it is to kind of create this hybrid dress sports watch. Something that still looks really good, but at the same time still casual. And a watch that's durable enough to take whatever life throws at you. Now I know this intro is already getting a little bit long, but before we really get into this, there are two things I need to point out. The first is one for the sake of transparency. This watch was provided by Matthew and Sons, and as far as I know, they're not going to want it back. Hence that sponsored tag at the beginning. And secondly, I want to point out that out of all the colorways currently available for the JCB, this is by far the most casual. The others are definitely a bit more dressy, so bear that in mind with some of the comments I'm going to make here. In keeping with the vintage theme, they kept the JCB a little bit smaller but still big enough for most contemporary watch wearers. So it's 38 millimeters wide without and 41.4 with the crown, as well as you have a narrower lug to lug here, just under 46. Total thickness here is 12.5 millimeters. And that doesn't really sound too impressive until you realize that includes a nicely embossed case back and a fairly tall domed sapphire. It's also fairly lightweight at 58 grams on its leather strap which combined with that smaller footprint make it a watch that's not only very comfortable, but one you can almost forget you're wearing throughout the day. If there's one immediate obvious weakness here, it's with the water resistance. Now, since this is a dress watch, 50 meters is perfectly acceptable here, and should be more than sufficient for most people. But since they are going kind of for this hybrid everyday watch thing, 100 meters would have been ideal. Yet it is worth pointing out that it also includes a screw down crown. Another thing you might have already noticed is that this watch is pretty reflective. I'm not sure if the fault lies in the dial or the crystal itself, but whatever it is, it does translate into real life. The case itself has a mixture of brushed and polished surfaces, which on the stainless version might be more obvious than the rose gold or gold versions. The sides as well as the bezel have this mirror-like polish which winds up sandwiching the linear brushing on top of the case. Looking straight down, the design here looks rather straightforward, but from the side, things get a little bit more interesting. You start to notice how curved the lugs are, as well as how far they extend down, as well as a small vertical ledge on the bezel before it starts to curve inward. Plus my favorite part, which is the double domed sapphire crystal as it rises out of the bezel, as it lines up perfectly and just creates this cool uniform look, which is something I also love from the Irakanji. There is some slight distortion at some of the extreme angles with this crystal, but overall it is really nice and clear. At the right, you have a signed screw down crown that is complete with the frosted Matthew and Sons logo. At first glance, it does look a little bit awkward as it's not very wide, and there is a little bit of a visual gap between the crown and the case. Yet it sticks out just enough that it's always easy to unscrew and use. It is a little odd here to have a screwed down crown with only 50 meters of water resistance, but it's also better to have it than not. Plus, as a bonus, there's also a decoupling mechanism as you screw the crown back in, which is something in this price range I would like to see more often. On the rear, we have a closed case back with an oil press design of a Scottish thistle. The design isn't pressed very deep, but it's beautiful and a nod to the family's Scottish heritage. Realistically, custom case backs like this aren't the most functional addition to a watch. 
But for me, it's a small touch that I always love, as I think it shows the designer is thinking about all the details. Now, there are a total of five colorways available, and this is the Sky Steel version, which, as I pointed out, is by far the most casual of the entire collection. So if you're looking for something more dressy, check out the blue rose or especially the crimson gold version. And if you're looking for something a bit more classical, then there are the two white dial versions. For the Sky Steel, we have this matte gray dial with primarily white accents. At first glance, it might not seem like it, but this is a fairly complicated design. At the edge of the dial, we have the chapter ring, which is primarily made up of white dots. Smaller dots for minutes, and every fifth one is a little bit larger to mark the hour. The exception to that is at the four cardinal points, where you have this small metallic square that is filled with white loom. Moving slightly inward, we hit the hour indicators, which are a mixture of Arabics that are painted on at the cardinal points and applied metallic wedges that slope slightly inward towards the center of the dial. After that, the dial sinks just slightly to create an inner circle, which contains the hands as well as the branding. At the top, you have the Matthew and Sons logo, and logo designs are always rather subjective, so some of you might like this and some of you are going to think it's a little bit weird. But either way, it's very apparent in white paint at the top of that inner circle, which isn't so true about the phrase automatic at the bottom. It's also painted on, but in a light blue similar to the second hand, which sometimes causes it to fade out into the background, and a lot of times I even forgot it was there. The hands are overall really well done here. We have metallic swords for the hour and minute, and they look pretty good in macro, and I like that the sides are angled so that they meet in the middle, just to give them a little bit more depth. However, the second hand here is something I go back and forth on. I do like the overall shape, and I kind of like the splash of color with the gray dial, as that thin arrowhead does look good as it goes around. It's just that I question the use of a flat blue paint here. Compared to the reflective edges of the indices in the hands, the flat and vibrantly blue second hand seems to stick out a bit as well as occasionally looks a little bit plasticky, which is also a stark contrast to the reflective gold hands on the other colorways. So I do wonder if using a heat-treated blue would have been a better choice here. Now it's probably an obvious thing to say, but this design isn't going to be for everyone, especially for those that like a clean, simple, straightforward dress watch. But the complexity of the design here is something I personally like. The different heights, angles, shapes, and materials of the different markings all give the watch a tremendous amount of depth and complexity in a rather small and thin package. Plus, the multiple crosshair elements on the dial all guide your eyes right towards those hands, which make this not only a good-looking watch, but a highly functional one as well. However, while I do like this design, I think it does raise the question on whether or not this complex mishmash really belongs on a dress watch. And if you're talking about a traditional dress watch, I'm inclined to say no. Yet the saving grace here is the whole idea that this isn't a traditional dress watch, and sort of a hybrid sports watch. Now, this is a whole lot bigger discussion, and I'm not really sure if there is a right answer here. But for now, let's just kind of move on to the loom, and I'll touch back on this just a little bit at the end. So good news is that there is loom, but the bad news is that it's just okay. Just the hands and the cardinal squares on the chapter ring are loomed up, and they do have this nice BGW9 blue loom. However, it's not terribly long-lasting. It does last longer than a Vostok, but not much longer. So I think it goes without saying that I would love more loom here, but kind of for what the watch is, I think it's okay. Now, as for the movement, we have a regulated Miyota 9039, which is sort of a slightly thinner non-date version of a 9015. So it's high beat, 42 hour power reserve, hacking, and hand winding. Pretty much all you want at this price. And this one in particular was running at about plus three and a half seconds a day. Now, at this price, I'm sure there are some of you that would love to see a Salita movement, but I think a 9039 is a great choice here. And personally, I'm becoming a real fan of these 9000 series Miotas, as they're a little bit cheaper, a little bit thinner, and have a little bit longer power reserve. But for the most part, I've just been pretty happy with everyone I've seen. The only downside, as I've discussed before, is that the rotor can be a little bit louder than its Swiss counterparts. 
Now, I believe a beads of rice bracelet is currently in the works, but for now they all come with a genuine leather strap, with this one coming with a black crocodile style leather strap, as well as a matching buckle. The strap itself is pretty good, it's got a nice texture that's supportive without being too thick, and it's fairly flexible from the get-go, so not much of a break-in period. Generally, I'm not a fan of this style of strap, just because I think it's way overused, Yet, I gotta admit, it looks pretty good here. So, in terms of value, we're talking a price here of 550 Australian, which I think is about 425 US. Now, normally I like to give you guys some watches to compare these to, but I realize it's kind of hard to find a microbrand dress watch these days. But in terms of comparing this to other micros out there with a Miyota 9000 movement, like say from Zelos, Trasca, or Notus, I think the price seems pretty fair. Now, the design of the JCB is really going to be the watch's biggest strength, as well as biggest weakness. It's a great design, but it doesn't really fit into any particular mold, and a lot of people out there are rather rigid in what they want a dress watch to be. So, if they want a dress watch, they're just going to buy a more straightforward dress watch, and if they want a sports watch, they'll pretty much do the same. Yet, I think there are people out there that are just kind of tired of the same old thing. People who are just searching for something different, and for them, I think this could be exactly what they're looking for. It really is a good looking and versatile watch, one that seems to balance a visually interesting complex design with not being overly crowded. It's a little bit retro, as well as being a little bit different, as it's a modern timepiece that doesn't imitate the past as much as honors it. Well, that's my take on the Matthew & Sons JCB, but let me know what you think about this watch down below. Is it something you like, or is it just too different? As well as what do you guys think about their new field watch that's going to be coming out pretty soon. Personally, I'm a sucker for sandwich dials. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.